Hello everyone and thanks for hanging out with me. Here I have the Renault Megane E-Tech 60 kilowatt hours and the Volkswagen ID3, my Volkswagen ID3, 58 kilowatt hour battery. And today I want to compare them, compare them a bit. First, I want to thank uh, Auto Sonnleitner for giving me this, uh, the Renault for three days. It was very nice of them. Link is in the description below. So let's go through all the specs. I have here my data because I can't remember all those numbers. Um, let's start with the motor. 204 horsepower, 218 horsepower, 150 kilowatt, 160 kilowatt. Rear wheel drive, front wheel drive, torque, 310 kil uh, uh, newton meters, 300 newton meters, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, 7.3 seconds, 7.4 seconds. Top speed is the same on both, 160 kilometers an hour. Charging, AC, 11 kilowatt, 22 kilowatt. DC, uh, both peak 130 kilowatt. I have seen ID3 with 134 for a second. <laughs> and today I saw the Megane at 127, 128. So the same. Um, battery capacity, um, I know it from the ID3. Gross capacity 62, net capacity 58. But uh, I use EV database for my data. And for the Renault, it says 60 kilowatt hours on both net and gross, so I have no idea how big this battery is. WLTP range, 427 kilometers, 450 kilometers. Now about the dimensions. Length, 426 centimeters, 420. So the uh, Megane is shorter. Width, 207 centimeters, 205. It's also narrower and height. 156, almost 157 centimeters, 150 centimeters. So it's all over smaller, just a tiny bit. Weight, <laughs> 1700, uh, 1812 kilo, 1783 kilos. So it's even lighter. Now something important for a lot of people, towing ID3. No, <laughs> you can put a, a bike rack in the back, but you cannot tow anything. In the Megane, you can tow 750 kilo if there's no brakes on your trailer and 900 kilos if you can brake. The trunk space, 385 liters, 440 liters. I will show you the trunk so you can see. And fold it down all the seats. We have 1267 liters, 1332. Though there's more space in the trunk. And now the price, and that's hard right now because Delivery is hard and for the Megane, for example, you can only get one line uh, right now. Uh, there were three feature packages in the beginning. I don't know how it is right now, but uh, um, starting uh, ID3 at 34,500 with the middle battery and for the uh, for, so the 58 and for the Megane at 53.6 but it has more features for the price but and the ID3 goes up to 56.3 thousand euros all here in Germany and I went to the website and looked it up and the Megane can go up to 49.2 thousand euros now well, that's interesting let's look at the front of the car and as you can see um, the front is longer in the Megane because a lot of electronics is in here where in the ID3 motor is in the rear and in the front is just a few things but not too much so it's way narrower, uh, uh, smaller in the front than here but you have that weird bump that uh, hopefully they change at some point where the Megane is very nice there but when I look at the height it's very very similar. The rear is a bit similar I think that the Megane has a, has a nicer profile here but they're both going with the same way that the, the window is down here. The window in the Megane is even a tiny bit smaller and the, the, the headrests of the rear passengers is in the way that's why it has that camera that we go through in a second. The trunk in the Megane, Megane uh, seems to be almost the same size as ID3, just deeper and you still have a tiny little pocket where you can put one cable in. That's why it feels to be bigger. And again, the, the front thing is attached to the, 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 the trunk door and that's awesome, the same as in the ID3. And there you can see it. it, it is a bit, the ID3 is a bit longer. I still have a tiny pocket down here, but it's smaller. And you have a ski hatch that you don't have in the Megane. Seating position and space is in both cars the same. You have enough space here in the front, um, enough headroom. You can adjust the steering wheel in the same way. You have a nice armrest. In the Megane, the armrest in the door is, is harder. Uh, so on long trips, when you don't have a sweater on or something, it can hurt. And there's the big difference 
between the two cars. You have a bigger instrument cluster, you have a bigger infotainment screen, and then you have buttons for the climate underneath, and you have a tray for your phone, and this all makes the car feel a bit more cramped than what the ID3 has. When you look in here, infotainment screen way smaller, instrument cluster way smaller, there's nothing in the front in the way, it's just a way more spacious feeling. But if you need the buttons, if you prefer that, then Megan is more for you. Now a point where they differ a lot, the space for the rear passengers. I have this much legroom, it's soft here so that's fine, but my seat here in the front is all the way down for me to sit comfortably and I can barely fit my feet under here, that's it's just not possible. The seat has to be higher for me to sit comfortable in here. When I'm in here, this side here is also in the way, I don't have a lot of space, but the headrest is fine. Um, so that's okay. And again, this armrest is, is a bit harder. And I don't have a middle armrest. There's nothing here in the middle. Um, the rear passenger don't have, or don't have it that comfortable as in the ID3, but you have an air vent here in the middle where in the ID3, the air for the rear passenger comes from under the seat. Let's see it in here. One thing that's different here, I have an extra, so I have two floor mats here because I didn't remove the normal floor, floor mat and put a, a rubber one in. So <laughs> it's a bit higher down there, but I can fit on my feet under the seat, even though the sit, seat is on the lowest position and I can be, be even outside of the seat here. I have more leg room, head room. I would say it's even a bit less. Or, or the same as the same here on, on the side, it's a bit more, but uh, on, the, on the top here, I would say it's, it's a bit less or the same. I have a, an armrest here in the middle and this is softer for the arm as well. I don't have air vents, but uh, both cars have two USB-Cs in the rear. There's more space for, for the rear passenger, but I feel like I'm sitting a, a straighter more up here in the ID3 than I sit in the Megan. And I have two, four lights here where in the Megan I have two lights on each side and here they are in the middle. Now let's talk about the differences when it comes to software. Whereas the ID3 has Volkswagen software that they develop and it's a bit behind where the Megane has Android Automotive, it works really well, it's fast, you have Google Maps in there, you can install apps, Spotify and whatever. You can still use Android Auto if you want to um, on a big screen, that's really awesome. So when it comes to software, Megane is just a clear winner, even though I'm an owner of an ID3, but I know the negative points of my car and here it's just awesome. It's really cool. In the app, the app overall, um, you cannot set a, a charge limit in the app, you cannot see how fast the car is charging or anything like that, but you can see that it's charging, how long it will take to your uh, charge limit that you set in the car. But you can do a plan in the app uh, uh, for a long trip and it will include charging stops and everything and you can, I don't know if you can send it to the car, but uh, you can already plan the whole trip and that's very cool. You cannot do that in the ID3. You also can see where the car is standing and where you are in the ID3. This will come with software 3.0, then you can see where the car is, but not when the car is moving. I have no idea if the Megane shows where it is when it's moving. Something that I like about my ID3 that I use a lot is keep climate on. So I'm in the car, I'm shopping, I have the dogs in the back, I'm getting out, I just press a button and it just keeps the climate on for half an hour. The Megane doesn't have such a button. What it has with the app, I can do start climate now and it will uh, uh, use the climate and it does it only for 10 minutes then you have to start again you can do a plant a preheating or pre-cooling or whatever you can do that and it will uh, uh, to a to a time so it will cool the car down till it is at the 21 degrees and then keep it at the 21 degrees for 10 minutes again and then it stops 
Now let's talk about driving that's very important to me. How does it feel to drive? Is it comfortable? Is the steering nice? How is the power delivery? How is the regen and uh, how is the, the procedure to start? I mean, with the procedure to start is a, a bit different. In the ID3, you sit down, you press the brake and the car is on, ignition is on. In the Megane, you still have to press a button, power. Gear, to put the gear in is almost the same. You have to do it a bit harder in the Megane, but you get used to it, it's fine. In the Megane, you have regen levels, zero to three, and every time you start, you have regen level one. If you like strong regen, every time with the pedal shifters, you have to put it into three. In the, in the ID3, you get in and you have to do the gear change twice, so it is in B and has the strongest regen. Regen overall at level three, Megane is way stronger, feels way better, way more comfortable, better for one pedal driving. It's not really one pedal driving, but it's way better than in the IDC region. Rules in the Megane, really awesome. Suspension is very, very similar. Both are extremely comfortable, they're stable, they smooth out bumps, they feel uh, awesome, they don't feel too light, they're not jumping around on the highway at higher speeds, they're both amazing. Steering. ID3 is better here. The steering feels uh, uh, not as soft and light in, in the, as in the Megane. Even though you have three settings, or even in the strongest setting, it's still too light. But that light steering is only annoying at higher speeds, above 130, 140. Under that, it's totally fine. So again, it's, it's basically the same. Brake feel, so if you have to brake a bit harder, is worse in the ID3. In the ID3, the transition from regen to normal braking is okay, but when you have to brake, uh, oh my god, you have to brake a bit str stronger, the brake feel of your pedal is not the same in the brake as it is, as it is with regen. And that's always been a problem with me and the ID3. It, ha it hasn't been in other ID cars, not in ID4, ID5, maybe not even in other ID3, maybe it's just my car, <laughs> but it's not nice. In the Megane, it's perfect. You, you have regen and then if you need it stronger, the brake feel, so you have to be more sensitive with, with the brake pedal when you want to stop because it could be too strong. So it's really great. I prefer that. I like it a lot. Power delivery, uh, since the car has 218 horsepower, 204, when you accelerate, wait, I don't know, you're driving 60 and then you accelerate, it feels more and it feels great. In sport mode, really awesome. The problem with the Megane, and it's a big problem that takes it a lot of fun, front wheel drive, it, sh will, uh, it could have a lot of torque steer uh, and it, uh, could have a lot of spinning wheels and that's why I think they reduce the power delivery from the start a lot. So when you floor it and standing still, it's, what? What is this? Is this electric power? It's really underwhelming and boring. Uh, it takes all the fun out of an electric car. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it is like that. You really floor it. You don't have torque steer and you don't have spinning wheels, but it's accelerating like it has 100 horsepower or something. And then at, you get full power at around 60 kilometers an hour. This is how long it takes when you do a zero to 100. I know this is not important to everyone and I understand. For me it is. It's a nice feeling. That's why I love electric cars. It's not the only reason, but it's, a, it's one great point it's a lot of fun but when you drive 50 or 60 and then floor it you get great acceleration and great power then the megane is back and last point is the driver assist in the id3 you need an obd dongle and obd 11 to change that lane assist is always on when you start in the megane you can just turn it off and it stays off the whole time so this means departure warning when you are a bit off the line uh, um, then it warns you or steer back. It doesn't. It, it warns you, but it doesn't do anything. Maybe there's a vibration in the steering wheel. ID3 will pull you f away from where it thinks you shouldn't be, and sometimes that's wrong, especially on tiny country roads uh, um, where it's very narrow. And then you go a bit to the line, not even over, just close, and the ID3 doesn't like that. Uh, adaptive cruise control on both cars is really amazing. I prefer in the ID3 that I can set the uh, adaptive cruise control to eco, comfort or sport. This is how it accelerates and slows down. So in eco it's very comfortable with its acceleration when there's a change in, t in, in speed in the car in front of you. Uh, Megane doesn't have that. But what's better in the Megane is when you turn off cruise control, in the ID3 you get the full regen right away. So you have to be on the accelerator pedal so you don't slow down. It's 
it dramatically when you turn it off, when you have to go off the highway or whatever. In the Megane, it, it, the, the region fades in gradually, so you can really turn it off and then it fades in. It's really awesome. Negative though is when you turn it back on, it accelerates too strong, where in the, in the ID3 it's a bit more comfortable then. Self-steering, I don't have travel assist, but I've driven ID3, ID4, ID5 with travel assist and it's great. Um, problem that I have with travel assist with self-steering is that to re that the car recognize that you are still there and you're still steering, you have to steer with a bit of force so the car notice that you're there, it's not just touching. In the Megane, you can just hold the steering wheel and it will notice you. That's amazing, I love that so much. And the self-steering itself is not very intrusive, it's not shaky, it's really awesome. I love the self-steering. Usually when I do a self-steering feature in cars, I use it then when I need it, when I have to get something or I'm not, uh, uh, um, uh, looking at the, at the road for one second or whatever. Here I had it on the whole time even though I was totally concentrated on the road or whatever. It was just nice. It was just always there. It didn't interfere with me. It didn't beep at me. It didn't bug me or anything. Awesome. It is a few days later and I want to report uh, the drive home from, uh, from Regensburg when I, where I left the Megane because I noticed a few things in the ID3 that I didn't say quite right in the video. Um, number one that I, I, I remembered in the Megane is that yes, when you turn off cruise control it's smooth in the region so it's not jerky, but when you resume it gives a bit too much power and then it's a bit jerky. Um, but the most important part is the stability, suspension and steering. I said it already in the video, steering is very direct and a bit too loose, even in the hardest setting. Um, and yes, when you drive home with the ID3, you notice that a lot, especially at higher speeds. When you drive 140, 150 in the ID3, it's just extremely stable. Nothing is moving around. The steering wheel is not doing this. And even if you move the steering wheel a tiny bit, you're not moving around with the car. So it's very, uh, more comfortable and it drives better at high speeds. And the other thing is the suspension. ID3 for me is way more comfortable. It's it drives, like I said, stable and, and uh, it, it just feels better. It feels like you're uh, driving on clouds. Megane was a great suspension, not knocking it at all, um, but ID3 is better. <laughs> and the last thing is the noise level. Also, the noise level is a bit quieter in the ID3. But all of those things that I just said are not a reason not to buy the Renault Megane e tech It's still an amazing car. Well, that was a lot of information. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, there will be more videos on the Megane, of course. I did the 130 kilometers an hour highway range test. I did a charging test. Um, I did a, a review, a driving review. And in a half an hour, I will meet someone else with an ID3 and we're gonna do a little drive. 50 kilometers or even less, uh, start at 60%, drive a bit, come back to the same charger, charge up to 60%, see what the consumption is, what the consumption is of charging. So how many kilowatt hours we had to charge back in for their drive and what's the difference? That would be very interesting. So subscribe to see that. But that's it for me. Again, Megan is a great car. I can really, really, really recommend this car. Thank you much for watching. Have a great day and take care. Bye.